This is how I directed and shot a masterclass-like pastry chef image film all by myself in another country. If you see my last video, I was talking about how I have both experience with being a videographer by myself and also being a cinematographer with a crew of people. And today I want to break down a shoot where I was all by myself shooting, directing, everything except editing and how I was able to achieve a masterclass like video image film. So let's get right into the story of this shoot and let's start with the client. The client was Anja Gersberg, an Instagram pastry chef influencer who bakes her pastries without sugar. She gained a massive following on Instagram by making real-time videos about recipes for sugar-free pastries and baking and commissioned me to make a more professional image film type of video for her website and business. When I watch these type of videos, I always ask myself how did that person get in contact with their client or how did they first meet? And in this case, I met through a, another client of mine who I was filming in Germany with at the time and Anya was one of his clients. And even though I'm by myself, or maybe especially because I was by myself, I started to prepare for the shoot. So the first thing I always do when I'm getting commissioned for any type of video is ask the client, do they have an example video of what they would want like to achieve or in which direction they would want their video to be? And if they can't provide that, then I'll try to provide different examples and then establish a general direction of the video. And I wasn't too sure what she would want and I took a deep dive into various type of explainer videos, image films and found this masterclass trailer for a pastry chef explaining her craft and the dynamic editing, energy of the overall trailer just fitted perfectly also time-wise into what Anya and I imagined the final video to be. So we had a rough idea of how we want the video to look and now we needed to work out what Anya should actually say into the camera. So on the next occasion when I was in Germany again, I met up with Anya and we worked out the details of the script. In the meantime, I also shot some pictures on my newly acquired Olympus OM-1. There were two big problems though with planning the actual shoot. One which was the location, which in normal sized kitchen would work, but it wouldn't look as impressive. And two was the lighting and additional gear as all of my equipment is in the UK. At this point, I'm very used to using my Pelly case to fly over to Germany with my camera, but that doesn't include lighting or grip gear. And even though I'm from Germany, I'm not used to renting equipment in Germany because I shoot mostly in the UK. Luckily, Anja is an amazing client to work with and she was able to organize an entire kitchen studio for us to be able to shoot in. And that studio gave us all the space and all the resources to be able to shoot an impressive video. So once I was back in London, I did some research of potential rental houses in the area of the kitchen studio and was able to find Sunset Film Verlei in Heidelberg. At that point, my knowledge in lighting wasn't as advanced as it is now and it proved to be quite difficult to communicate over email as to what kind of equipment we would like to have, as we're also on a small budget. So it came to be that I was in Germany again for another business trip, filming with a bunch of clients and Anja was the last client on that trip. I did plan a preparation day, one day before our shoot, and on that day I also was at the location for the first time in person. Anya did send me some videos because she scouted the area before, but it's always different in person, and as I pointed out, preparation is key when shooting bigger projects. On that day, Anya and I also drove to Sunset Film Verlei in Heidelberg to pick up the equipment and prepare for the next day. Once we got to the rental house, Milan was super helpful in changing our rental and adjusting what we needed and what we didn't need so we'd be able to shoot in the best possible way and we got really lucky to get all of the equipment into Anya's car. Thanks again to Sunset Film Geräte Verlei for all the help. We picked up two 2K tungsten light fixtures, two 650 RF Renaults with full CTBs for each of these lights, a slider, a tripod, one 8x8 half grid and one 8x8 blackout muslin cloth with stances and auto pose to make a T-pole, which was much easier to use than a butterfly frame indoors because there's no wind. Then we drove back to Karlsruhe and got a good night's sleep for the next day. And the next morning, the shoot started. First, I had to unload all of the gear from the car and get it into the studio. The studio had multiple kitchen layouts and I first chose one of the layouts to be our main stage and we set up for 
her talking into the camera first. Very lucky for me, the studio had big windows and there was a lot of light coming into the kitchen studio already. So I used the light that was coming from the windows as my key light and just enhanced it with an 8x8 half grid and put the two 2K Fresnels right behind it. I put the other 8x8 muslin blackout on the other side as a negative fill. And then I used one of the 650 Fresnels to give her a small backlight. I did put CTBs on the 2Ks and I think I put a half CTB on the 650. So the backlight was a bit warmer. I also played around with the practical lights within the studio and the light fixtures in the studio. And that gave the background much more texture. I chose these big, big lighting setups just because I was by myself and I wasn't able to move around lights a lot, but I did want a very soft key light on her and on the food with possibly some harder backlight to pop out the subjects. I'm also very happy that during my film school time I learned how to use tungsten lights. Not that they're extremely complicated, but using CTB on them was extremely necessary as otherwise the light would have been very warm. And I really want to go for a clean, professional look instead of a warm, homemade video type of look. For camera gear, I used my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K with a Canon 24-205 f4, but with a speed booster it was an f2.8. I had a tripod and a slider, and I was shooting a bunch of handheld stuff. For the talking bits, I shot 25 frames, and for most of the b-roll, I shot 50 frames. We started off with the talking head bits, and then moved into the baking bits. Anya had worked out an exact baking schedule to which we shot to because she knew exactly which ingredients would have to be done first and which could be done last. So I worked around that and in between that we changed setups twice to make it look like we're in a different kitchen, a different location, which always adds more production value to a video. Generally having multiple locations for corporate video will add a higher production value, even though if it's the same location, just having multiple perspectives is always a good idea. The day went really well, even though one of the light fixtures cable kind of seemed broken and we're very lucky that we had two 650s and it was only one 650 that broke. But considering that I was all by myself and had to move every single setup all by myself and we were on a tight banking schedule, it went really well. Anya gave away a lot of the baking stuff at the end of the day to me, to the studio owner and the rental house and I can attest it tastes really really good. At the end of the day we had to pack up everything and drive it back to Sunset and then I was off back to London. At the time I was not the most confident editor and I wanted to hire out somebody to help me out. I got into contact with Sam Chadwick who was an editor on one of the previous projects I was DPing for. As I was very happy with what he'd done with the previous project, it was quite a challenge to edit something in German with an English editor. I did have to transcribe all of the text and do a pre-edit in which I just extracted the text bits. I was super happy what he's done creatively, even though it wasn't his native language and he didn't even understand what he was editing. But I'm very glad that I hired him just because at that time I would have not been able to get such a dynamic edit out of the footage. I also got Mick on board to clean up later and get the files ready for a color grade. And I then graded the footage by myself. So the project was not entirely made by me, but I did all of the shooting and pre-production and I was supervising the post-production and doing the grades. And now as a final bit, I want to reflect on what I could have done better and what I've learned from this shoot. It was the first time for me shooting food related content and I didn't realize how much you A need slow motion and B need a lot of light for slow motion. I was really lucky that the studio had big windows and there was a lot of ambience light anyways but the 2k Fresnels would have not been enough if it was only for that and that brings me right to my second point. I really should have used LED lighting. LED lighting is just so much more efficient easy to use and has much more light output per power used that it's super easy to operate single-handedly. It was quite an interesting experience using tungsten lights with CTB, but it's really not that powerful. I was further quite surprised how good my 24 to 105 lens was, especially for close-up shots but I think it would have been great to also have a macro lens 
to really capture even more details really close up. Although I'm generally quite happy with the entire video. I'm also surprised how well we managed the entire thing, but it was also due thanks to Anya for having such an amazing organization and schedule and being very fast and great in front of the camera anyways. So I didn't have to tweak her performance as much. I also probably could have saved some money with the edit and just edited myself, but at the time I was not very confident in my editing. And also editing is my least favorite part of shooting and when I can delegate it, I will always do it. Ultimately, I am very happy how the video turned out and how close it is to my original vision of the Masterclass trailer video. And I'm super happy that I was able to shoot everything by myself in another country. I'm super grateful for Anya as my client, as she was a pleasure to work with. She was super organized and very clear on what she wanted, which some clients struggle with. But this was the complete opposite case, which also helped making this video all by myself. I'm always super glad when I can shoot videos in different places as I travel around. And even though this was my home country, it was still traveling as I was now living in London. And I'm really happy to shoot the next one. So this is how I shot this video by myself. And in the next video, I'll discuss a shoot where I had an entire crew with dedicated roles for each department, where we had multiple lighting setups and how that shoot was very much different to this shoot. Also let me know if you have any other questions about this particular shoot and I'll be sure to answer them in the comments. Thanks for watching, give me a like if you liked the video, subscribe to my channel for more insights on the whole topic of videography and cinematography and I'll see you in the next video.